Hey everyone, this is Ryan Jeske with the Prescott Caliber Club. In today's video, I wanted to talk about buying or building a bug out bag and address the question, is the shit hitting the fan? It's tough to prepare in the moment of SHTF, right? So I think it would be a very, very good thing for all of us to have some kind of kit, pack, bag, something like that set up ready to go in case something happens. In the event of an SHTF type scenario, you have two options. You can either A, hunker down and bug in, or you can B, get out of here and bug out. Now, many people in an urban environment, many people without preps are going to be stuck hunkering in. They're gonna be targets, sitting ducks. So for me, I like to get out of Dodge if this is gonna be overrun. Of course, protect what you've got until you can't anymore. But um, that's where the term bug out bait came from, okay? If we need to bug out of here and you need a bag, it should be prepared, ready to go, but more on bug out bags later. What I wanted to talk about right now was actually the potential of SHTF. You guys are asking the question, is the shit hitting the fan? Well, let's address it. Let's talk about it. First of all, what is shit hitting the fan? Well, it's abbreviated as SHTF, shit hits the fan. And an SHTF event can really be determined by the individual. Like, for example, if you lost your job and you were unable to pay your mortgage and you were going to lose your home, that very much could be an SHTF event for you. That wouldn't be an SHTF event for me, you losing your home. SHTF by definition is not world ending, okay? It's not like the apocalypse, although it could be. It could be. Okay guys, I'd like to ask that if you enjoy the content here on the Prescott Caliber Club channel, please share our videos to your social media pages, like, subscribe, hit the notifications bell icon, that'll help keep you up to date with what we've got going on around the store. So guys, I wanted to address what the actual potential of a real SHTF event is currently in the United States. Now, there are a lot of indicators, there have been a lot of happenings in the last three or four years that could really actually lead us down the road to an SHTF type event. We have everything from the 2016 election, the Trump upset, where everybody thought that he was gonna lose, but he won. We have COVID-19, which came up out of nowhere and turned the economy absolutely upside down. It was unprecedented what happened in the United States. Um, it ended up being a major stimulus bailout with almost a UBI, you know, universal basic income type feel. The government is taking care of us. Um, the George Floyd death and nationwide protesting, riots, looting is currently going on. There are also real viable calls to abolish or defund the police departments. Um, you know, accusations of race driven police brutality. Uh, and on top of that, Police are walking off the job. I think the real question is, will there be W-R-O-L, without rule of law? Is that going to be in our future? And I think the potential of that right now is higher than it has ever been in, in our history. Along with W-R-O-L, what will happen is martial law will come into play. Uh, you know, we're gonna have scenarios like the purge, there's gonna be anarchy and lawlessness in the streets. There's gonna be nobody to call to come protect us. Nobody to call to come help. Nobody to come put the fires out. There's not even gonna be anybody to come take the dead bodies off your front lawn if you do have to defend your property. As the, as the protests and riots continue, you'll notice they're starting to progress, right? They're starting to change from just riots in the street to actual autonomous zones. What I see here is the indicator that multiple places are feeling um, similar and they're wanting the same type of results and so they're starting to form the same type of things. This is progressing and in the wake of the George Floyd death, the mainstream media has been doing nothing but flaring race tensions, claiming social justice victories. I don't wanna get political or take sides here, but the reason this is important is because we're being set up. I'm gonna talk about Garrett Rolfe. He's the officer in Atlanta who is charged with felony murder. 
in mainstream media is hyping this as a racial uh, racial crime, a social justice victory. They are preparing you for this huge win against racism. He'll be offered a plea and he will won't take it. I wouldn't either. He doesn't. He's going to get off scot-free. This will go to trial. It will be publicized, televised, and then when he is acquitted, people are going to be floored and they're going to be back out in the streets rioting. That is the play here. That is what is going on with Garrett Rolfe. They are setting us up to be so angry that we go back out again and burn the streets. I guarantee you that's what is happening here. On top of that, we have the potential of the COVID second wave. Now, is it real? I don't know. That doesn't even matter in this video, in this discussion. The reason it doesn't matter is because it's going to happen whether it's real or not. The government is in control of this. And there's a number of reasons they want to do this. They're going to not allow the presidential debates to occur. The other thing they don't want is for us to have to go to the ballot boxes. If they can enact some kind of martial law environment, something where they now have full control over us, they can completely control the feeds into our home telling us what's what. They can dictate who's going to be the next president. The craziest thing about it all is that neither side is going to accept the loss as legitimate. There is going to be um, an absolute blow up, riot in the street, freak out, regardless of who wins. Um, regardless of who wins. The peaceful transition of power in this country will be gone. I don't see a very good outcome from this election. If Joe Biden wins, it's going to be a big, big issue. If Donald Trump wins, it's going to be a big, big issue. But when we lose the peaceful transition of power, we are going to be in big trouble in this country. Mark my words. I wanted to address the topic of police officers walking off the job. Many people, again, are claiming social justice victories here. We're shutting down the police, you know, damn the police and all this stuff. The problem with the situation we're in right now is that we're going to be driving police out of their jobs, right? Like in Atlanta, the police are walking away. Do you think that void is not going to be filled? If the police are not present in the streets, you're gonna have gangsters and tough guys and racists and all these people stepping in to run, run the streets. That's going to happen. The immunity statute protects police officers from um, having their personal lives attacked because of something that happened on the job. I hear a lot of people arguing for this, saying this is going to keep people accountable. I strongly and fully disagree. Police officers without this clause can be sued. They can have their home taken away. They can lose their cars, their jobs. I don't think it's a good thing at all, and I don't think these police officers deserve it. And let me tell you why. An individual police officer has no say in company policy has no say in training, has no say in what he receives as his job duties, has no say. The agency has all the power, all the control, all of the say, and the agency should be held responsible, not the individual. These officers are going to see it for what it is, and the good guys are going to walk away because it's too risky to their own personal lives to be an officer. I want to talk to you a little bit about the the financial ripoff that just occurred, okay? So, on top of everything here, on top of everything else we've got going, I went to efile.com and I did a little research. And on their website, the Fed shows 119 million people paid taxes. There's 328 million people here, 119 million paid taxes. That's kind of shocking in itself. That's not the point of this though. There was a $3 trillion stimulus package that was put out. Okay, three trillion dollar stimulus package. That means that in 2019, right, when we all just the year we just finished, 119 million people paid for that. That comes out to twenty-five thousand dollars per taxpayer. Per taxpayer. So if you didn't pay twenty-five thousand dollars in to the government last year, which the vast overwhelming majority didn't. Where did that money come from? And if you didn't receive $25,000 in benefits, where did that money go? This was a huge financial ripoff of the American people. The reason I'm bringing this information to you guys is because the people are fed up. And if they're not fed up yet, they're gonna be fed up very, very soon. We are fighting against each other in this country. 
whatever, colors, classes, whatever it is, we're all fighting against each other. There's going to be some form of a civil war followed by a revolutionary war. We're reliving history that predates the American Constitution, okay? We're talking about 1765 and the Stamp Act Congress here. The American colonists came here claiming oppression. They were being oppressed there. They didn't want to be there. They left. They came to America. They settled here. And the crown in Britain continued to tax them. In 1765, there was a tax placed on the people for every single piece of paper that you use. Those pieces of paper arguably started off the Revolutionary War. This is when the people, the colonists here in America said no more. We're trying to get away from you. We don't want to be part of you. You're forcing this upon us. We're not paying your taxes. No taxation without representation, right? No taxation without representation. The idea of this is starting to show its face. It's starting to show its face in places like Atlanta, where the police are walking off the job. The people in, the, in, in these towns don't have anybody to call for help. Yet they were taxed $25,000 last year. Are we being represented? No, but we're being taxed. What is the function of government if not to protect the people? If the people aren't safe, why do we have a government? During the Stamp Act days, there was a really prominent attorney. Uh, his name was James Otis. And James Otis popularized the frame that taxation without representation is tyranny. Tyranny. This is what we're dealing with today. We are in the midst of a tyrannical government and they have us scrambling, confused, infighting with each other, race fighting, sex fighting, class fighting. A tyrannical government is ruining the United States of America, the American empire, okay? That's what we're in here. This is why I think it's so important. This is why I think the potential of an actual SHTF event is real, okay? This is unprecedented what we're going through here. We are reliving the past, the history, and what came right after this stuff was the Revolutionary War, okay? The Revolutionary War. Like, so guys, if you're enjoying the content here on the Prescott Caliber Club channel and you wanted to help support us at all, please jump in the description section down below where there's a number of ways where you can save some money while supporting the channel. Uh, Pure VPN service, we have an Amazon shopping link, uh, EMP Shield discount codes, all kinds of stuff in the link down below. Uh, Patriot Supply Company, um, if you're doing any shopping there, jump to our link and, and that'll help support the channel. Additionally, you can help support the channel big time by heading over to our online store, prescottcalclub.com, where we have you know thousands of items in stock, emergency preparedness, firearms items, uh, accessories, gear, knives, all kinds of cool stuff. If you like the content, if you appreciate what we're doing here, jump on over to prescottcalclub.com and I'm gonna throw out a discount code just for this video. Survive 2020. If you use that discount code, that will save you 10% store-wide for a very, very limited time. Okay guys, so with the potential of SHTF right in our faces, like I said earlier, I think it's very important that you find yourself some kind of bug out bag, bug out kit, uh, whatever it is, I don't know, I don't care. I just think that everybody should have something. You can build your own bug out bag or you can buy a pre-made bag, right? Like, like the Uncharted Supply, you can buy something pre-made. You can build your own. The cool thing about bug out bags is there isn't really an exact template to follow, okay? The Uncharted Supply template is a great one to use, but it really depends on who you are and what you do. If I'm packing a bug out bag for Noxy Boy for my little son, I'm gonna have crayons and fruit snacks and, and stuff to keep him busy and all this, and it's gonna be light enough for him to carry. That's another thing you need to remember. You need to be able to carry this bag for miles, miles, potentially. If you guys would check out this video right here if you're interested, this is my big, I'm never coming home, inch bag, bug out kit, whatever. It's in a bag, but it's not actually meant to be carried on your back. It's meant to be rolled and put in a truck and taken somewhere. The reason I'm mentioning inch bags is that you can actually do a bug out plan where you have layers and that's what I do. I put my inch bag in the truck. If the truck gets to the bug out destination, good. We have everything we need to start a base camp, right? If I get halfway there and I have to bail out of the truck, I have my bug out bag, which I grab, which I still can survive off of. If something goes wrong there, 
I even have a third layer, which you can see right here. These are my ankle kits, okay? Right here. I wear those on my ankles every day. I have enough items in those ankle kits to actually survive for a day or two out in the wilderness. Shelter, all kinds of stuff. You guys will be blown away. Check out my video right here that shows you how much you can actually carry on your ankles every single day. It's wild. So once you have everything picked out for your bug out bag, once you have a plan, once you know what you're gonna do, you need to get yourself the actual bag. Now, this back here is a good example of one of the bags we carry at Presca Caliber Club. This is a Condor pack. This is very well built, nice heavy zippers. This is double stitched. Everything about this bag is, is very, very nice. It's important, it's important to have a quality bag. And I know, um, I've, I've actually seen this where people are arguing on the internet over bags. And I'm wondering, my goodness, like it's just a bag, right? Well, yes and no. Some companies use very cheap zippers, very cheap cloth and materials. They only put a single stitch in and it's light duty thread. Uh, zippers not being waterproof. There's a number of things that go into an actual real solid bag, right? The, the container that holds the whole bug out kit. There's a million things that could go wrong, but a very quality bag is important and they're expensive. So you need to make sure that you're really making some good decisions. We carry the Echo Sigma stuff in store. For me personally, I really, really enjoy the Echo Sigma bags, packs, their contents. It's a good price for what it is you're actually receiving. Now the Uncharted Supply Bag, that still to this day is one of my favorite bug out kits, but it's pricey. A lot of people can't quite afford it. So I wanted to give you guys a couple of tips. If you wanted to try to replicate the Uncharted Supply bug out bag, use their template. Take a look at it. And the cool thing about Uncharted Supply is that you can go to their website and you don't have to buy the whole bag. You can buy just the electronics insert if you like that stuff. I really like their electronics. If you want the fire starting insert, you get that. There's different little packs and you don't have to buy the whole kit. You could just buy part of it. One of the coolest things about their product is this. This bag, their shell, that's what they call it as a shell. That is a rubbery kind of polyurethane almost type material. I mean, it's completely waterproof. The kicker though, is that it floats. It's a dry bag and it floats. It keeps your stuff dry. And if you get to a creek and you need to swim across, you can throw it in, jump on it and float. So guys, I wanted to give you a little money saving tip here. The Uncharted Supply Company shell is one of the most amazing ideas and thoughts in a bug out bag in recent years, in my opinion. Okay, and that's just my opinion. Again, they're a very high end company. They're a little pricey. There is an option. Ozark Trail, the Walmart brand, has a very, very similar bag to this. It has a very similar bag, and you can go ahead, pick up the Ozark Trail shell, maybe buy some of the inserts from Uncharted Supply, and really have yourself a pretty nice bug out bag at a pretty darn budget price. So, some of you may be wondering why I'm pushing Uncharted Supply if I don't sell their 72 bug out bag here. I don't actually sell this one. It's because I do sell some of their products. They, like I said, they have awesome products. One of the most amazing products that I found that I carry in our store is the Rapid Raft. So we have an Uncharted Supply Rapid Raft. People look at that and they think, my goodness, what the heck would you need a boat for? Well, you might need a boat. This is the principle of a bug out bay. Every day as I'm doing life, right, I'm watching people and I'm watching what they do. And if I see something neat, like a, I don't know, a chainsaw, cut a tree down really fast, I'm thinking, boy, that would be nice to have in a bug out, but I can't carry a chainsaw. I can carry like the SOG hatchet and saw combo that we carry at Prescott Cow Club. So basically guys, you need to somehow figure out a way to miniaturize everything so that it fits into a bag that you can carry on your back. It sounds impossible, it's not, and it's a really fun project actually. So guys, if you are a new prepper, I think that a bug out bag is one of the most essential, immediate things you should get prepared. That is just a base starting point for most preppers. If you want some help building one at home, let me know. If you need some of our products, let me know. I don't care where you guys get this stuff from. I just think you should build yourselves a bug out bag. If you have any questions about anything on our website, please let me know. If you have any questions in general, just shoot me an email, firearm related, any of it. I'm happy to work with as many people as I can, as long as I have the time to do so. If any of this interests you, if you feel like maybe 
um, maybe a bug out bag is something you would like, please head on over to prescottcalclub.com and check us out. We have tons of emergency preparedness gear. We have firearms, we have accessories, we have solar products, everything you can just imagine. So head on over to prescottcalclub.com and take a look at what we've got. Even if you don't purchase anything from me, these items are personally handpicked by me. These are the items that I thought were necessary to keep in a store for a bug out type situation. So head over there, it might give you some great ideas. Conclusion, I know this has been a long video. Um, I've thrown a lot of information at you. I'm trying to um, increase the quality of my videos here. I can, uh, I, can, I can show you guys the things that I like. I can show you guys the things that I think you should have. Um, I can show you, you know, the things that I do. But unless we really have these conversations, I don't think um, most people really hear the point. They don't understand why. I think why is a very, very important question to ask. And that is the point of this video. Is shit hitting the fan? I think so. That's your why. Why what? Why buy a bug out bag, right? I think it's time. I think right now, if you do not have a bug out bag, I think it's time to get one. If you've had a bug out bag sitting in your car or your closet for a while, I think it's time to take it out and take a look through it and see what's in there make sure you're good because the landscape of what's going on here in the United States is terrifying in my opinion. We have never been closer to a major WROL without rule of law SHTF grid down scenario ever. Ever. And it's scary. It's scary. But there is hope. There are options. We can take care of ourselves. We can make it through these types of things. It's all about thinking ahead. It's all about being prepared. That's what the Prescott Caliber Club is all about. Helping you get all the things you need so that you feel secure and safe in whatever scenario, whatever happens. So I'm not gonna take up any more of your time. I'm not gonna chew your ear anymore. I know I've talked a lot, but I appreciate you guys. I wanna let you know that I appreciate everybody, especially the people who sat through the video this long. I, I absolutely appreciate you. So until next time, you guys stay safe. Keep prepping.